Hi, this is Anne Marie Gaddy from Classic Movie Hub, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here today with Ted Donaldson, who I met last year at the TCM Film Festival. I had such a lovely conversation with him, so I asked him if he would be so kind as to spend a couple of minutes with us today, and he agreed, so I'm so happy. So welcome, Ted. Thank, Thank you for you. coming here Thank today. Thank you for asking me. The first time that I learned of you was because of my mom. When my mom was a little girl, she kept talking about this fabulous movie called Once Upon a Time about this little boy who had a dancing caterpillar named Curly. So can you tell me a little bit about that movie? Uh, how, how, how much time do we have? Do we have a couple of days? <laughs> I wish we did, but we're going to have a lot of time. Okay. But, 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 let me just preface it by saying I, I was a kid actor in New York. I did a lot of radio and uh, stage stage work. I was in Life with Father, mm -hmm. which played at, uh, some people may remember at least hearing about the old Empire Theater. It was across the street from the old Metropolitan Theater. Okay. And Life with Father, of course, is one of the great classic comedies, uh, both stage and, and film, and film. Mm -hmm. and, um, I played the youngest boy in mm -hmm. that, and I played that for a year, and I did, as I say, a lot of other radio. And then in 1943, I was uh, early 43. I was in a play called Sons and Soldiers by With Irwin Shaw. Gregory With Peck. With Gregory Peck. Now, Mr. Peck and I, I'm not, I don't ever recall meeting him because I played his brother as a boy. It was one of Erwin Shaw's uh, generational narratives that he seemed to, uh, to be very fond of, of working with. But it had a fabulous cast. Uh, Geraldine Fitzgerald, who played, oh my. Uh, who played my mother and whom I, I did work with. Uh, the wonderful uh, character actor, uh, Herbert Rudley. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, um, I was going to say Luther, Luther Adler, and also uh, Millard Mitchell, and Carl Malden. Oh that's a that is a superb cast. I was seen in that by a woman named Edith Van Cleave, who was an agent for MCA, and she later, over the years, became very high up mm -hmm. at MCA. But she wired Harry Cohn, who's the president of Columbia Studios, that she thought she had found the right boy to play opposite Cary Grant in My Client Curly, as it was then uh, originally called. Because it was a, adapted from a radio script by Norman Cohen from a short story mm -hmm. by uh, uh, Louise Fletcher, who also wrote Sorry, Wrong Number. And uh, on one of his visits to New York, Harry Cohn made an audition mm -hmm. of me. I didn't read anything in the part. Mm -hmm. uh, he simply had me stand in front of the camera and he just asked me questions and, uh, for, for a few minutes to talk about myself or what, whatever. I had a terrible cold, a runny nose. Ah. He could not have been I think everybody uh, watching or listening knows the reputation that Harry Cohen had, uh -huh. <laughs> probably very well deserved. He could not have been more gentle, mm -hmm. more kind, uh, and more charming. Oh. And in a little while, I learned that I had gotten the part, mm -hmm. and a few months later, came out here to do Once Upon a Time with, with Cary Grant. So for uh, Once Upon a Time, you were a young boy who had a little caterpillar crook, Curly, and I don't want to give, you, you all have to really seek out this movie. It's really, it's so adorable and heartwarming. Although Cary Grant kind of plays a little bit of a meanie, like, uh, yes. you know. But it's such a wonderful little uh, story. It 
curly dances when you play a certain song for him on your when harmonica? I, when I play uh, Yes Sir, yes, sir. That's My Baby that's on my the baby. harmonica, and I have a shoebox uh -huh. that Curly is in, and a hole in the side of the shoebox, <laughs> and I charge a nickel to people to uh, watch Curly dance yeah. to Yes Sir, That's My Baby. It's the only musical number that he dances to. That's right. <laughs> he gets up on his tail and he dances yeah. around on and it. And Cary Grant, uh -huh. uh, we won't go through the whole plot, of course. Uh, no. But uh, Grant plays a theatrical producer who has had three flops in a row, uh -huh. is just about to lose his theater, when one night he comes out of the theater, sees the kid, pays his nickel, uh -huh. and sees a way to save his theater. Yeah. And that's, that's the plot. That then mm -hmm. is the story. It's really charming, charming. So do you have any stories or special memories that you'd want to share with us about this movie? About, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, I think I asked you, how much time do we have? <laughs> Let me give you just very, very quickly, I won't go through ev everything, um, how I met Cary mm -hmm. Grant. Uh, we were doing a test um, for, I thought it was originally a test for Janet Blair, I now think, who played my sister mm -hmm. in it. And now I think it was a test that the photographer wanted, Franz Planer. And I think he wanted to see us, how we all looked together. And uh, this particular day, my father and I are seated in the director's chairs. And Grant is probably, I'm trying to think, maybe about where, where that is, where that bar is, is there. What, like 15 feet, maybe 50, 20 feet? About 20, about 20 feet. Okay. And he is talking with someone, I don't know whom I can, the only thing I can remember is that Grant was very tall and this man was very short. Mm -hmm. I don't know who he was. Um, but uh, Grant was never looking in, in my, my direction at all. And then the, the short man left. Mm -hmm. And Grant came over to me. He put out his hand and said, how do you do? I'm Terry Grant. <laughs> and I slunk down in my seat and said, I know. <laughs> and he turned to my father and said, and you must be Mr. Donaldson. What a great pleasure to meet you. Wow. That was how I was introduced to Cary Grant. Cary Grant introducing himself to me. Oh. And that started it. That started it. We. Um, while waiting, waiting for things to be uh, set up uh, in in, the, in that first first scene where he comes out comes out of the theater, uh, he once asked me. He said, "Do you know? Uh, do you know? Uh, we're sitting on the, the 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 steps of those old wonderful old apartment houses." Yeah. And he said, "Do you uh, do you know um, the Mazidokes, which was a big hit, oh. big hit." Uh, at the time, and uh, I said, Mersey Dotes, oh, oh, you don't know me, Mersey Dotes and Dozy Dotes and Little Lambs that I be a kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? I thought it was the funniest thing I had ever heard. And I laughed, and we sat on the street and together sang Mersey Dotes oh and Dozy Dotes. He was that way all throughout, all throughout the movie. Wow. Let me give you one more, one more mm -hmm. thing. Uh, there's a scene in the movie where he, he has now taken over the kid. Mm -hmm. and the kid is a, a, not so much a poor kid, but he's, you know, he and his sister don't have any money. Janet Blair mm -hmm. is a, plays a, a showgirl, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, he has, he's called a big press conference mm -hmm. to introduce me and Curly. Mm -hmm. And so we all have to be dressed, dressed up. So now all of that is in, in, all of that is in the script. 
So I'm in the uh, I'm in the men's dressing room, and this wonderful head of men's dressing room, Tom Dawson, big beefy Irishman, mm -hmm. you know, very lovely, sweet, sweet man. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got this blue blue uh, suit on, mm -hmm. and uh, suddenly who appears but Cary Grant, <laughs> and he and Tom Dawson exchange greetings. He says, hello, Teddy. And then he, Grant, does this to my, my the, the sleeve, mm -hmm. the bottom part of my sleeve, and says, what's this? And Tom Dawson said, well, this is his, uh, his suit for the scene, uh, mm -hmm. Gary. And he said, it's not blue serge. I'm wearing blue serge. Really? He said, well, we don't have a blue serge suit for the kid. He said, it has to be blue serge. Really? And did and they? And it was. Wow. And three days, two or three days later, I find myself at a place. Oh, and first let me preface, preface what I'm going to say. When Grant said this, he was not irritated, mm -hmm. not in the least. Mm -hmm. It simply wasn't right. right. That's all. Right. It was a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. I'm wear blue serge. The kid has to wear blue serge. Wow. Not that anybody would notice, mm -hmm. but. And a couple of days later, I'm at a store called Macintosh's, which was on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, it was a costumer. Men, men's costumer, but I think people also had had their own mm -hmm. suits oh. made there. And uh, I'm standing there, where my father is, uh, is there, uh, watching, and I'm being measured, and here is Cary Grant standing beside me, wow. adjusting the length of the sleeve and wow. saying, <laughs> I think maybe to the tailor. I think maybe just you know like a wow. sixteenth, sixteenth of, of an inch or so. Wow. Cary Grant supervising my fitting. It was like that all throughout. Wow. wow. And um, from time to time, I would see him mm -hmm. uh, often at a at a magic show because I had a magic act mm -hmm. when I was a kid, oh. and he was. Uh, he was a great fan of, of, of magicians. Yeah. And um, then uh, I was doing a movie at RKO, mm -hmm. and he, uh, I ran into, into him there. He was doing, uh, I think every girl should be married. Sure. And um, he, uh, he, he was coming in to the studio just as my mother and I were walking mm -hmm. out. And we chatted for a moment, and my mother and I then went on our way, crossing the street, and suddenly the door flings open, and Grant says, sticks his head out and says, how's your magic? Oh, how nice is that? Mm -hmm. Well, this was, uh, this was now 19, 1949, mm -hmm. and in a couple of months I was going to be graduating from mm -hmm. high school. And so I wrote to him and asked him if he and Betsy Drake, whom I had, mm -hmm. whom he had introduced me to uh, at the studio, if they would come to my graduation, oh. which they did. And um, they sat with my, my parents. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my. And um, from time to time, I would, I would see him and then I finally decided I've got to write him, but I kept thinking, what exactly? What am I going to say? I don't mm -hmm. really know. And uh, one day I finally realized it was going to be 30 years mm. from my graduation. And at our graduation, it was held, I think, the Crystal Room of the Beverly Hills Hotel. Mm -hmm. So it was a very small. It, private school, 11 of, 11 of us <laughs> graduating. So everybody in the audience 
everybody in the audience knew that that, mm -hmm. that, that Grant was there. And um, I finally decided that's it. That's how I will begin the letter to him, mm -hmm. that it's nearly 30 years yeah. in just a few days. And uh, about a month later, the phone rang. There was a lot of uh, street work being done outside, mm -hmm. right outside my window with a jackhammer, you know, very noisy. Mm -hmm. And I answered the phone mm -hmm. and I said, hello. And the voice said, hello, may I speak with Teddy Donaldson? Mm -hmm. And you know how sometimes something happens and just you have just that microsecond that something is mm -hmm. a little different. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't place it, partly from the noise, mm -hmm. but one, it was the, the, um, the, the cadence of his mm -hmm. speech, and the other was that he called me Teddy. Mm -hmm. And there have only been about three or four people in my life mm -hmm. that I was ever called Teddy. My parents never called me Teddy. Mm -hmm. It was always Teddy. And I, would ne and I didn't object to it. Mm -hmm. Because it always made me, it was, I always thought it made me sound like a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I said, this is he. And he said, this is Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. Now, I had not left my phone number mm -hmm. on uh, what, 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 what I wrote to him. But he told me that he had been uh, uh, traveling with, with his daughter, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. And he had just returned. And um, uh, he had to call me. Now again, go back to the way I met him. Mm -hmm. He introduced yeah. himself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't brought to him. He didn't yeah. have somebody bring, mm -hmm. come over with himself. He didn't. Um, uh, he, he didn't have somebody call and say, "Would you please hold for Cary Grant?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He probably simply called information and got my phone number. Well, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. I do realize, you know, we, there's some events going on here, so we only have a couple more minutes. So, oh my gosh, I could talk to you forever, but can we talk a little bit about Tree Grows in Brooklyn? Sure. sure. Um, I've said for decades that it's one of the greatest American films ever made. Absolutely. I think it is the greatest performance that Dorothy, not only that Dorothy McGuire gave, I think Dorothy McGuire's performance in this is one of the greatest screen performances mm -hmm. ever given. Uh, I can't speak for all the European films, but for all the American films that I am familiar with, I think it is certainly one of the very greatest performances because of the extraordinary variety. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, James Dunn performance for which he did receive the uh, supporting Oscar is a great performance. Peggy Ann Garner's performance is quite possibly the greatest performance ever given by a child. Mm -hmm. And um, Joan Blondell, I still think, should have gotten the Oscar mm -hmm. for, um, for supporting, at least have been nominated. It is extraordinary to me that it received only a couple of nominations, one of them for screenplay, and mm -hmm. it's probably one of the best screenplays ever written. Okay. But Maguire was not nominated. Yeah. Blondell was not nominated. Uh, and I'm, I still don't understand it. Of course, we see that every year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's outrageous somebody didn't get nominated. Mm -hmm. But it still really puzzles me. Yeah. I played Neely Nolan. And it was the perfect film, first film for Ely Kazan. Yep. So Kazan is, is, very, is rather rough on himself and, and on the film. Uh, because it was not the kind of film that he eventually wanted to make. Mm -hmm. But it is brilliantly directed, mm -hmm. brilliantly directed. Mm -hmm. uh, he gives, in his autobiography, he gives too much credit to Leon Shamroy, who is a superb photographer. Mm -hmm. But I can show you particular scenes that if it had been a play, that he would have staged in virtually the same way. Mm -hmm. I think he saw a parallel between film movement mm -hmm. and <clears throat> movement on stage that might have been almost unconscious mm -hmm. with, with him.
but it is it is there. And he was Excellent. marvelous, marvelous to work with. Of Excellent. Course. Excellent. I wish we had another half hour. I wish, honestly, we had like five hours to talk. But I, you know what, we'll have to do this next year again. Okay? <laughs> okay. I would love to continue this talk, but I, I, there are a bunch of things going on today. Thank you so much, Ted, for spending some time with us. I really appreciate it. My mother is going to be over the moon excited that I talk to you. So thank you. I really appreciate your time. Great. This is Anne-Marie for Classic Movie Hub with Ted Donaldson. Thank you.